What's going on guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. I just wanted to make a quick lesson today on uh, incorporating chromatic notes into your lead playing. Alright, so um, basically when you uh, do this stuff, you're kind of breaking the rules. There really isn't rules per se in music, but what I mean by that is uh, you should know your scales and you should know where your chord tones are located within your scales before you start uh, you know, incorporating non-scalar notes, which essentially what this whole lesson is going to be about. So, um, what I was doing there was I was playing in the key of E minor, okay? The chords were uh, E minor, and then it went to um, a D chord, and then it went to an A minor chord, and then it went to a C chord, okay? So that would be a 6, 5, 2, 4 progression, all right? All diatonic right to the key of E minor. So your key scale would be the E natural minor scale, okay? So those would be your scale notes. And then within that particular scale, um, you want to target your chord tones as the chords are occurring. Okay, I made many, many lessons about this before. So uh, for the E minor chord, which would be the sixth chord, your chord tones are highlighted in green here. Um, then for the uh, five chord, which would be the D major chord, these are your chord tones. Then for the two chord, which is your A minor chord, here's your chord tones. And then for the four chord, which is your C major chord, these are your chord tones, okay? So, what I mean by the rules is when you're walking from one chord tone to the next as the chord changes are occurring, you kind of want to use scale notes more often than not. But, once you are really good at that, once you really know your chord scale relationship, um, then you can go ahead and you can start adding in chromatic notes. Okay, chromatic notes are the blank spots that, um, you know, aren't don't have any dots on them in this diagram, okay? So just a couple of examples of how you might go about doing this. You know, you want to get your timing down, and obviously it helps to uh, play with practice, uh, practice with backing tracks and whatnot. But, um, you know, so say we're going from the E minor chord to the uh, D major chord, okay? So say the chord tone I'm landing on, on the E minor chord is right here, okay? On the B string, all right? So, and I want to get to here. I want to get to the next chord would be the D major chord, so I want to get to here. So if I was to just use the scale tones, I would go... Okay, but I can use a chromatic walk to go... Okay, so that one note right there on the 14th fret, that's not part of the scale, but if you use it as a tasteful uh, passing tone, you can go... Instead of just sticking within the scale. Okay, and then after the D major chord, say I want to go, you know, I want to target this note of the A minor chord. So instead of just going, I could again throw in a chromatic run. Alright, so basically you're just going to have to practice this over backing tracks. And, um, you know, if you uh, have checked out my improv course and my, uh, which comes with a uh, whole plethora of, uh, video backing tracks that have all these diagrams and stuff in there, uh, you can do that. You can uh, practice with backing tracks with the, um, you know, the scale diagrams on the screen and the chord tones lighting up as the chords are changing. And, you know, you can just go ahead and you can uh, start adding in notes from those blank spaces that aren't necessarily part of the scale, 
but they still sound good if used in a passive or in, in a passing tone type of way. Okay, so I mean, there's not really much more to explain about that. Um, if uh, you don't understand the uh, chord scale relationship yet, or if that's something that you know you're still not completely uh, comfortable with, I have a few lessons that I uh, will link you to below. But um, I recommend you learn that first, and then you can start incorporating chromatic notes, okay? So this is one of those cases where you really want to know the rules really well before you go ahead and start breaking the rules. And again, when I say rules, I use that term lightly because there's no rules in music. But I mean, you really want to know your scales, and you want to know your chord tones within the scales, and then you can start throwing in non-scalar notes, all right? So um, that's pretty much it. Very quick lesson. Just wanted to get that out there. and. Um, you know, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up and I will uh, do my best to get back to you. Alright, thanks a lot.